Namaste. Today we begin a new module, which is public sector in conservation. This module will have three lectures, externalities, public goods and common resources, and the design of the tax system. So this lecture is externalities. But before we begin, let us have a look at this principle of economics that we are touching in this lecture. Markets are usually a good way to organize economic activity. Now, why are markets good ways to organize economic activity? Well, there are several reasons. Things like there is an option of a free will. The buyers and the sellers see for themselves what is in their best interest and they act according to their own best interest. There is an option of free will. There is an option of choice because the market is going to provide those goods and services or those variety of goods and services that are going to increase the welfare of the buyers and the sellers. At the same time, there is a quick transfer of information. There is uh, prices that act in the market that provide information about the demand and supply in the market. So if the price of something is high, it means that that particular good probably is in a high demand. And that would give a signal to the sellers to manufacture more and more of that good so that they can also have a share of the profits. And at the same time, all of these also increase the efficiency of the system. So it increases the benefits of the majority of people in the society, which is why we say that markets are a good way to organize the economic activity. But the thing is, they are not always. It's it says here, markets are usually, they are usually a good way, but not always. Why? Because when the markets are working by themselves, we have observed or we have suffered from a number of environmental and ecological damages. Things such as the Minamata disaster of Japan. Now, we'll look at this in a greater detail in the 12th module. But in short, the Minamata disaster occurred because there was a company producing acid aldehyde that was dumping the used catalyst into the oceans. So when, whenever there is a production process, there will be some kinds of waste that are generated. Now, in this case, in the case of the Chiso factory that was manufacturing acid aldehyde, the waste was the spent catalyst that was having mercury inside. Now, the company could have done two things. One, it could have treated the waste before it was disposed of, which was the right option, but it would have incorporated certain costs to the company. The cost of treating, the cost of installing an equipment in the company to treat the waste. So that was the right approach or the approach that we as a society would have preferred. But for the company, it was something that was in, uh, that would have led to an increase in the price or the increase in the cost of production. So what they did was they did not treat any of the, the spent catalyst and it was directly dumped into the seas. Now, when you add mercury into a system, mercury is a heavy metal and causes a number of neurological disorders. So the, the nerves of the body, they do not function that well when uh, somebody is fed with mercury. Now, in this case, what happened was when uh, the suspend mercury or the compounds of mercury, when they were dumped into the seas, it started entering into the bodies of several organisms. And in a short while, people started to observe that the fish in the seas, they were dying and they were coming on top, they were floating on top. And Minamata happened to be a very good fishing village. Fishing was the major occupation in this village. And in a fishing village, when you observe that so many fishes are dying off, it creates a problem of livelihood. Because if there are no fishes, what will the fishermen do? Second thing that they started to observe was that the cats in the city, they started to show very bizarre symptoms. So they started to show repeated movements. They started to commit suicides because of the neurological disorders. And after a few more years, people started to document that we were seeing all this, all these symptoms in the humans as well. Because the, the humans who were eating the fish 
from this sea that was contaminated with mercury were also getting mercury in their own bodies by means of this food, the fish. And so people also started showing a number of neurological disorders. And when the cost was computed of the of the extent of environmental damage, the extent of health damage, the extent of social damage, it ran into a compensation of billions of years, uh, billions of yens per year. So that is the Minamata disaster of the 1950s. Now, in this case, the company could have uh, treated the waste before it was being dumped. And in that way, this disaster could have been prevented. But then because the company was acting only in the self-interest, it was not looking at the interest of the society. So it ended up committing such a big blunder that it ended up paying a huge amount of money out of the uh, company's coffers as well. Now, this could have been prevented had this externality been internalized in some manner. Another example is the London smog of 1952, in which case so much amount of pollutants was released that it created a big social menace. The release of dioxins from Seveso plant in Italy in 1976, the Love Canal waste dump. Now, this is a very important waste dump story because in this case, what was done was that these waste, the industrial waste, extremely toxic chemicals, they were just dumped into an area with no treatment at all. And after a while, this dump yard was covered with a small bit of soil and then it was sold off to be constructed into a school. So a school was actually constructed on top of a dump yard that was having extremely toxic industrial chemicals. And when the pupils in the school, they started showing symptoms when uh, the pupils started getting ill, then people came to know about this. Now, this case, in this case as well, there was a company that was dumping these waste to cut its costs. It was just a cost cutting approach, nothing else. Or if we have a look at the Bhopal gas tragedy in our country in 1984, in this case as well, it was just a simple matter of cost cutting. What the company did in those days, the Union Carbide Corporation, what it did was that to cut costs, it started accumulating the MIC uh, liquid that was extremely toxic and should not have been uh, uh, accumulated in large quantities. And then when it was accumulated, it was kept in those tanks that were not that well maintained. So into those tanks, water was able to seep in the liquid had to be kept refrigerated because it was extremely reactive when the temperatures went up but the refrigeration unit was shut down to cut costs also when the gas got released because of this poor maintenance the flare towers were not working the uh, the chemical wash towers were not working so all of these things could have been prevented had the company actually spent some amount of money into proper maintenance. Now that was expected of them because as a society, we do not want to have companies that release such toxic uh, chemicals into an environment. But a company that was only working on a profit motive, it did not consider these social costs that get involved. Again, here as well, there was an externality in pain. Or the Chernobyl nuclear accident or deforestation, pollution, global warming, you name an environmental problem and there are a number of externalities that are involved in most of them. So while markets are usually a good way to organize economic activity, they are not always because of a number of market failures. Now, what is a market failure? The markets have a big role to play in our society because they increase welfare of the people. They increase the welfare of the buyers, they increase the welfare of the sellers and theoretically they should bring the society to a level that is the optimum level. So you cannot increase the welfare of any particular person without reducing the welfare of someone else. 
in those situations we say that it is an optimal level of welfare so markets if they work well they should be able to bring the welfare to the most optimum level because each seller will be able to get highest profit for what he is making and each buyer will be able to get all the products at the cheapest possible cost and at the best quality now this is what the market is telling but a market failure occurs when through some processes this optimality or this level of welfare is not reached so market failure is a situation in which a market left on its own fails to allocate resources efficiently that is it fails to allocate the resources things like money things like time things like resources to those units or those companies that are acting in the best welfare of the society so that is a market failure and two major causes of market failure are externality and market power externality is the impact of one person's actions on the well-being of a bystander so in the case of externality what we are saying is that there is an actor who is doing something and because he is doing that there is an impact on a bystander who has got nothing to do with that, that action so for instance the students who were studying in the school that was built on the love canal site they had got nothing to do with the dumping of these toxic industrial waste into the love canal but still they had to suffer the consequences so that is an externality because the action was done by one company to put untreated toxic industrial waste into um, a canal site and to sell that off to uh, for the construction of a school but the impacts were suffered by the students small children who had got nothing to do with that so the small children in this case the pupils were the bystanders and the company who was dumping these chemicals was the actor in the case of minamata disease as well the company kiso corporation was the actor who did the action of dumping of untreated uh, mercury laden industrial waste in the form of spent catalyst into the seas the fishermen did not ask the company to dump that the fishermen were completely bystanders the fishes were completely bystanders the cats in the city were bystanders the residents of the city or of nearby places they were all bystanders they did not ask the company to do that but the company did this mistake of dumping the chemicals but the consequences were suffered by all of these all the bhopal gas tragedy in that case the people of bhopal did not ask the union carbide corporation to maintain its plants in a suboptimal level to consent uh, to uh, store a large quantity of the meg gas and to uh, shut down all the safety precautions the people of bhopal did not do that so they had got nothing to do with the action of the company which was to cut down the cost and to blatantly uh, flaunt all the uh, good practices uh, that are required in the storage of this chemical meg but then they suffered when this chemical got released so the people of bhopal in this case were the bystanders so all of these are examples of externalities the impact of one person's actions on the well being of a bystander another cause of market failure is market power the ability of a single economic actor or a small group of actors to have a substantial influence on market prices a good example is a person in a village that is suffering from drought conditions and this is the only person with a well so he can charge any amount of money or another example is say a contractor that is purchasing sugar cane from a very large area and he is the single contractor now in that case whatever price he offers is the price that the farmers of sugar cane will get so he has a tremendous amount of market power so we can have market power in terms of the seller for example uh, the owner of the well in the drought village or in the form of the buyer when you have only a single buyer such as the contractor of sugarcane from very large number of villages so if you have buyers or sellers who are in a very small number 
in those circumstances it is very much possible that one or a few buyers or sellers may influence the market prices and that is known as market power so they are having a power over the market in terms of the price that the market brings up now in this lecture we will focus on externality the uncompensated impact or the impact of one person's actions on the well-being of a bystander and when we talk about externalities we can have negative externalities or positive externalities now negative externality is when the bystander is impacted in a negative manner such as if there is a company that is releasing pollutants the people in the surrounding they have to suffer the health consequences and so it is a ex negative externality in certain other cases we have a positive externality such as things like vaccination so if people get vaccinated they are not only protecting themselves but they are also providing herd immunity for the community which means that the diseases will not be able to spread that easily in a community where a large number of people are already vaccinated so they are providing a positive impact through their vaccination through their action of vaccination they are providing a positive impact to the bystanders in the community who did not ask these people to get vaccinated who did not pay money for them to get vaccinated but they also receive a benefit because their community and from that they themselves are now less prone to getting the disease so that is the positive externality we can also talk about production externality and consumption externality the production externality is something that occurs when there is a production of a good consumption externality is something that occurs when there is a consumption of a good so when the company is producing something and is releasing pollutants this is the this is a production externality but if somebody is buying those products then through this process of buying or through the process of using certain products if they are releasing pollutants then it is known as a consumption externality a very good example is those vehicles that release a large amount of smoke so the people who are consuming these vehicles who are using these vehicles they are spreading pollution into their communities by means of consuming this pollution spreading vehicle so in this case we will say that it is a consumption externality so let us now look at these four combinations so we have negative or positive and we have production and consumption so we can have negative with production so negative production externality negative consumption externality positive production externality and positive consumption externality and we we'll look at all four of these so let us begin with the negative production externality so there is a production that is going on and it is leading to a negative externality or negative consequences so when a firm's production reduces the well-being of others who are not compensated by the firm when a firm's production so there is a production that is going on and this production reduces the well-being which is why it is negative of others who are not compensated by the firm good examples are industrial pollution and loss of ecosystem services due to mining now in the case of mining there is a company that is doing a uh, production of these uh, minerals or ores and because of this activity there is a loss of ecosystem services in the form of say clean air or clean water in this area so this is a negative production externality industrial pollution also is another negative production externality because the industry by means of producing something the producing goods it is creating pollution in the surroundings that is reducing the well-being of others who are not compensated by this particular industry now in the case of negative production externality we can differentiate between the private marginal cost and the social marginal cost now what is that private marginal cost is the direct cost to the producers of producing an additional unit of a good it means that suppose there is an industry that is manufacturing pens and 
in the manufacture of pins they are using a process that releases a large amount of smoke to take a hypothetical example now the cost that it takes the company directly to manufacture one additional unit of a pin is the private marginal cost so it is a private cost so this is a cost that is being uh, paid by the company so it is a direct cost to the producers and at the same time this is a marginal cost which means that it is the cost of producing an additional unit of a good just one more pin how much does it cost to the industry to manufacture just one more piece of pin now this is marginal because we are not talking about an average cost we are not talking about the cost of manufacturing 100 pins we are just asking the question what is the cost of one more unit of production and direct cost because it is the cost that will be paid by the company another cost that is involved is the social marginal cost now when the society uses this good now when the producer is making it it is uh, the producer is making it for somebody so somebody is going to purchase this good now the uh, the buyers who are going to purchase this good will pay the the company with certain amount of money which is uh, the price of this particular product but they are not just paying the company but they are also paying the doctor or the healthcare system why because the pollution that was created by the gen by the production of one extra piece of pen that is also causing a negative side uh, side effect on a number of people in the community who will have to pay for their own health costs because the company is not compensating them for the pollution now if we add that cost to the price that is actually paid for the purchase of one pen that is the social marginal cost so it is the private marginal cost to the producers plus any cost associated with the production of the good that are imposed on the others so that is the social marginal cost the cost to the society of one extra unit of something now that cost is paid to the company and it is also paid to overcome the side effects of production now in the case of a negative production externality the social marginal cost is greater than the private marginal cost because there is a marginal damage that is also included so the social marginal cost is equal to the private marginal cost plus the marginal damage because the society is not just paying the private marginal cost but it is also paying the marginal damage because of the use of this particular good so md here is the marginal damage so smc or the social marginal cost is a private marginal cost plus the marginal damage now why are we incorporating this private marginal cost because the society will be paying this amount for the production now when we talk of production we are not just saying that the industry is producing things the society is also producing something so ultimately this is a decision that has to be taken by the society at large do we want pens to be manufactured by this particular process now remember that we had said that a society's level of uh, being or the living standards are decided by the amount of production in that particular society so the the society wants this particular good to be manufactured because it wants to raise the standard of living of the people who are living in this particular society now to raise the level of uh, of uh, standard of living they will have to produce more and when they are producing more there is a cost involved in production and there is a cost of the marginal damage that is being made now how does it look on the equilibrium curve now this is our normal equilibrium curve so we have a demand curve and we have a supply curve and where the demand and supply meet we have the equilibrium point that gives us the equilibrium price and that also gives us the equilibrium quantity that is demanded or supplied 
by this market. Now, in the case of a negative production externality, if we do not consider the externality at all, then this curve will tell us the market equilibrium. So here S is the private cost or the cost of production. Now you'll remember that the supply curve is given by the cost of production of the good to the seller, which is what we are seeing here. The cost of production is giving us the supply curve and the demand curve is given by the private value that people are putting uh, for this particular good. Now in this example, the value is given by the amount a person is willing to pay for this particular pen. So here we are observing that we have the private cost and we have the private value that are giving us the demand and supply. But when we consider the externality, then this private cost, this becomes the private marginal cost for each uh, point on the curve and there is a marginal damage that is also incorporated and so we have a social marginal cost. Now the social marginal cost at any point is the private marginal cost plus the marginal damage. So the cost at this point plus the damage will give us the social marginal cost. Now, because there is an increase in the cost, because we are also looking at the cost of marginal damage. So whenever there is an increase of cost, the supply curve shifts to the left, which is what we are observing here. So the supply curve in this case has shifted to the left. And the amount of this shift is given by the marginal damage that we have. So in, in the case of the equilibrium, considering the negative production externality, there is a shift in the supply curve. Now let us have a look at the benefit. So here we can talk about the private marginal benefit and the social marginal benefit. Private marginal benefit is the direct benefit to the consumers of consuming an additional unit of the good by the consumer. Which means that as a buyer, if I purchase this pin, what is the amount of benefit that I'm getting is the private marginal benefit, the direct benefit to the consumers of consuming an additional unit of the good by the consumer. And we also have the social marginal benefit, the private marginal benefit to the consumers minus any cost associated with the consumption of that good that are imposed on others. Now, in the case of the negative production externality, such as manufacture of a pen with a polluting process, if I'm purchasing a pen, I'm not putting a cost on others by using this pen because the cost has already been imposed during the manufacture. So when I'm using this pen, and we are, in this case, we are not talking about the pollution that will be spread when I throw this pen out into the dustbin. But while I'm consuming the good, so but, uh, from the time that I purchased this pin and uh, till the time I'm writing with this pin, I'm not imposing any cost on others because of this consumption. Now, if there is a cost that is involved, then we will have a difference between the social marginal benefit and the private marginal benefit. But in this case, because it is a negative production externality only, the social marginal benefit is equal to the private marginal benefit <laughs> because no costs are imposed by the consumption of the good. So in this case, the benefit curve, the demand curve is given by this D where private marginal benefit is equal to the social marginal benefit. And there is a deadweight loss that is involved. So what we are observing here, if we, for instance, take a quantity of this much. Now here what we are observing is that the benefit of this particular quantity of good is given by this point. Where 
the quantity line the vertical line is intersecting with the demand curve now the demand curve is giving us an indication of the value of this particular good and it is giving us an, an indication of the welfare or the surplus that it will provide to the buyer now in this case the cost to the society is given by this point where the quantity uh, uh, curve which is the vertical line is intersecting with the social marginal cost curve so in this case this is the benefit and this is the cost so it means that the benefit is greater than cost so the benefit is greater than the cost now if we consider a point say here so this is the quantity that we are looking at q now at this quantity the cost to the society is this much this is the cost to the society and the benefit to the society is given by this point where it is intersecting with the demand curve so this is the benefit so what we are observing here is that the cost is greater than the benefit so for this point we have here we have cost is greater than benefit now in the case of economics we had begun with our assumption that everybody is a rational decision maker which means that if the benefit is greater than the cost then the decision to manufacture the good should be taken but if the cost is more and the benefit is less then the society should not allow the manufacture of that particular good because it will cost the society more but the benefit that the society uh, gets is less so essentially what we are saying here is that at this equilibrium quantity which is the optimal equilibrium quantity this is the amount of good that should be be made or demanded or supplied where the social marginal cost line is cutting the benefit line but in actuality what is happening is that we are having this much amount of good that is being demanded or supplied because this quantity we were getting when we were internalizing the externality and this is the point which we are getting when we are not internalizing the externality so what is happening is that there is a deadweight cost involved the deadweight loss is created for the society because some units are being produced and consumed for which the cost to the society is greater than the benefit to the society or the social marginal cost is greater than the social marginal benefit so this is the deadweight loss that gets created because of the negative production externality because for all of these units the cost given by the social marginal cost is greater than the social marginal benefit so this is the deadweight loss in the case of a negative production externality we can also have a negative consumption externality when an individual's consumption reduces the well-being of others who are not compensated by the individual such as consumption of cigarettes so if somebody is consuming cigarettes the people who are sitting around him or her are also becoming passive smokers they will also suffer the health consequences of inhaling the smoke that is arising because our actor is consuming the cigarettes these people have got nothing to do with this person having the the cigarettes but they will have to suffer the consequences so it is a situation where an individual's consumption is reducing the well-being of others who are not compensated by the individual so in this case 
the people who are becoming passive smokers and who will have to suffer the health consequences they will not be paid by the person who is consuming the cigarettes so it becomes an uncompensated loss to others which is why it is a negative externality and it is arising because of consumption so it is negative consumption externality parting with a loud noise now in this case the people who are doing the party they are having all the fun they are consuming the loud noise but the consequences are suffered by the people who reside nearby because they do not want to have that loud music and a number of those people might also suffer because of the loud music they will not be able to sleep properly if it is their sleeping time or they might suffer from certain health impacts such as an increased hypertension now this is a cost that the people who are doing the party are imposing on others and they are not compensating for it so they are not going to go to the other homes and pro, uh, say pay for the cost of uh, their treatment of hypertension or consumption of suvs the sports utility vehicles now these are large size vehicles that emit a large amount of pollution so they impose a cost on the society in terms of global warming because they are consuming more fuel and this fuel will get burnt and it will increase the amount of greenhouse gases that we have in the atmosphere so each suv is doing a small bit to increase global warming now this cost is being imposed the cost of global warming or the cost of climate change is being imposed on the society by the people who are using these gas guzzling vehicles but these people are not paying the society back or they are not compensating for the damages so it is an externality it causes damage to the roads because of a higher weight but then these people are not going to pay extra for the maintenance of roads they lead to more insecurity to other vehicles due to their higher momentum so if there is an accident with two light vehicles then the amount of damage that anybody suffers is less in the case of an suv because of its large weight the momentum is higher and so the damage that it can cause to another vehicle is also higher now this cost of the probability of having a higher damage is not being compensated by the owner or by the user of the suv so this is a negative consumption externality now in this case again we can talk about the private marginal cost and the social marginal cost and the uh, the definitions are the same the direct cost to the producers of producing an additional unit of the good is the private marginal cost and the private marginal cost to the producers plus any cost associated with the production of that good that is imposed on the others is the social marginal cost now in this particular case we are not talking about the cost of caused by the production of the suv we are only concentrating ourselves with the damage that is caused by the consumption of the suv and so in this case we will say that the social marginal cost is equal to the private marginal cost because there are no costs that are being imposed by the production of the good we are not considering any cost in the production of the suv we are only concentrating on the cost of consumption and so we will say that for our analysis smc is equal to the pmc which means that when we talk about the equilibrium and when we are not considering the externality we have a private cost and we have a private value and in the case of the negative consumption externality we are saying that the uh, private marginal cost is equal to the social marginal cost there is no change in the cost of production which means that there is no change in the supply curve we are only we are saying that there is no change in this green line on the other hand when we look at the private marginal benefit and the social marginal benefit the private marginal benefit is the direct benefit to consumers of consuming an additional unit of a good by the consumer that is the benefit that the person who is using the suv is deriving out of using the suv is the private marginal benefit the social marginal benefit is the private marginal benefit to the consumers minus any cost associated with the consumption of the good 
that are imposed on the others. So we, what we are saying here is that we have the social marginal benefit, which is the private marginal benefit minus the marginal damage that is being caused by the consumption of an extra unit of SUV or by say the consumption of an extra cigarette or by consumption of an extra minute of loud noise. So that is all of these are leading to a marginal damage. And if we subtract that marginal damage from the private marginal benefit, we get the social marginal benefit. So what we are saying here is that the benefit to the society in this case is not equal to the sum of the private benefit of everybody. It is the sum of the private benefit of everybody minus the marginal damage that this consumption has caused. So if you look at the society in total, there is a benefit because of the use of the SUVs. There is a cost because of the use of this SUV. And if you subtract the cost from the benefit, you get the net benefit, which is the social marginal benefit. Now, in this particular case, because the margin, uh, because the, the social marginal benefit is less than the private marginal benefit. So the curve will shift to the left. So here we are observing that there is a change in the demand and the demand is shifting to the left. And how much will this curve shift to the left is given by the marginal damage that is being caused by the consumption of an extra unit of this particular good. So we have a situation where the social marginal benefit is equal to the private marginal benefit minus MD. The social marginal benefit is less than the private marginal benefit and the difference is MD or the marginal damage. Now, when you have such a situation, when the social marginal benefit is less than the private marginal benefit, then it creates a situation where you are having more amount of consumption than is the socially optimum level of consumption. Now, what do we mean by that? If we look at this curve and if we consider, say, a point here, Now, the cost to the society is given by this point. The benefit to the society is given by this point. So in this case, the benefit is greater than the cost. And for all the points to the left of this point, we will find that the benefit is greater than cost. But at all the points to the right of this point, we will have a situation where the cost is given by this point, which is there on the S curve or the social marginal cost curve. So this is the cost and this is the benefit that the society is getting. Now in this case, for all the points to the right of this point, we have a situation where the cost is greater than benefit. Now, what does that mean? Now, remember that in economics, we say that people are rational decision makers. Now, as a society, consumption of an extra good is leading to a cost which is greater than the benefit. So in that case, that much amount of good should never have been produced. Because by not producing that good or by not consuming that good, the society can increase its total surplus. Now, the aim of the market was to enhance the social surplus of, the, uh, of all the buyers and of all the sellers together. But in this case, we are observing that we are consuming certain goods for which the cost is greater than the benefit. So this leads to a, a deadweight loss situation. So a deadweight loss is created for the society because some units are being produced and consumed for which the cost to the society exceeds the benefit to the society. So the social marginal cost is greater than the social marginal benefit. 
and the quantum of this blade weight loss is given by this gray colored triangle so it the actual social optimum quantity should have been this much but the quantity that is being produced is given by this point when we are not considering the externality so all of these the gray portions they become the dead weight loss we can also have situations of positive production externality positive production externality occurs when a firm's production increases the well-being of others but the firm is not compensated by those others examples a firm digging canal is, is paid for digging but also benefits the farmers so when we give a firm a contract to dig a canal then we will only pay the firm on the basis of the amount of earth work that the firm is doing so the amount of earth that it has dug it has removed to create the canal is the amount that we are going to compensate it for but when the canal is dug then it also increases the agricultural productivity of the surroundings because now people have more water for irrigation of their crops now this is a an effect on the bystanders in this case the bystanders are the farmers of the of the surroundings now those farmers they were not paying for the digging of this canal they did not pay the firm but they are reaping out the benefits because of the action that the firm did and the firm did not receive any compensation for the benefits that it provided to the farmers so this is an example of a positive production externality it is positive because it is providing a positive impact on the bystander it is a production externality because this externality is arising because of the creation of something the production of the good so this is a a positive production externality now when the farm income increases the standard of living in the surroundings may increase which will then also reflect in the say nutritional status of children it will reflect itself in the educational status of the surroundings now all of these positive benefits are being provided for by this company but it is not receiving any uh, compensation for these positive impacts so which is why this is a positive production externality another example is a firm that is doing mineral exploration because it also paves way for other firms once the mineral is found in this case there is a firm who is uh, that is doing mineral exploration and it is being paid for only the amount of exploration that it does that is it is being paid for how many square kilometers of area has it explored but when uh, there is uh, the uh, the discovery of an important mineral in that area an important ore in that area then it will also result in huge amount of employment because there will be other firms that will coming uh, that will come to this area once the ore has been found and they will extract this ore and in the process they will also provide a large uh, quantum of employment now the firm that was doing the exploration is not getting paid for the development of a surrounding that will happen if it is able to find out an ore so which is why this is a positive production externality it is bringing in a positive impact in the terms of employment or in terms of the total production of a country or in terms of the living standards in a country so these are the positive impacts that are being brought about by the firm that is doing the mineral exploration and this is a production externality because it has got nothing to do with the consumption aspect the firm is only doing a production activity in terms of the service that it is providing but because of this production it is giving a positive impact on the bystanders that is say the people who will get uh, jobs because of uh, the extraction of these minerals and the firm is not getting paid for that it is not getting compensated for that which is why it is an externality now in such cases we can talk about the private marginal cost and the social marginal cost now 
Private marginal cost, as we have seen before, is the direct cost to the producers of producing an, ex an additional unit of a good, which means that in the case of the firm that was digging the canal, it is the cost of how much does it take to say dig an extra kilometer of the canal. The direct cost to the producer, the direct cost to the company that is digging the canal of producing an additional unit, which is say one kilometer of the canal. Then we also have the social marginal cost, the private marginal cost to the producers plus any costs that are associated with the production of the good that are imposed on the others. Now, in this case, the positive, uh, in the case of uh, positive production externality, we have social marginal cost is equal to the private marginal cost plus the cost of production of good that is imposed on others. In this case, this is a negative figure. So we get SMC is equal to PMC minus the marginal cost or plus the marginal benefit. So what we are saying here is that the social marginal cost is equal to the private marginal cost plus the marginal cost that is imposed on others. In this case, the cost is, in, in, is negative because it is a benefit. It is actually not a cost. So this becomes private marginal cost minus the marginal benefit that this production is provided to others. So SMC is PMC minus the marginal benefit. So in this case, the society has to pay less of a cost because it is paying for the cost of digging minus there should be also a deduction for the benefit that this activity is giving to the society. So for instance, if I am say purchasing this pen and I am paying 30 rupees for the purchase of this pen, but I am getting 10 rupees back. So in that case, the cost that I'm paying for this pin is 30 rupees that I'm paying minus the 10 rupees that I'm getting back in the form of the benefit. So the social marginal cost in this case is the private marginal cost minus the marginal benefit. So how does that affect the equilibrium? So this is our normal equilibrium. And when we are not considering the externality, we are only talking about the private cost and the private value. But in this case, the cost to the society is less. So the social marginal cost is equal to the private marginal cost minus the marginal benefit. So it is costing the society less to manufacture this good. Now, if you look at the benefit or the demand side, then we have the private marginal benefit and the social marginal benefit which is what were defined as before. But in this case, there is no cost that is imposed by the consumption of the good. So if the society is consuming an extra kilometer of the canal, then, it, then there is no cost involved in consuming the canal or in getting water from the canal. So in this case, the social marginal benefit is equal to the private marginal benefit because there is no change in the demand curve, which is what we are showing here. So what is happening in this case is that the society is paying for the taking of the canal, but it is also receiving a value in terms of the positive externality that is uh, accruing because of the taking of the canal. So the, the society paid 30 rupees, but it got 10 rupees back in terms of the other way. So uh, another example is if I purchase this pen for 30 rupees, I get this pen which is worth 10 rupees free with it. So the cost that I'm paying for this pen is 30 rupees minus this 10 rupees is what we are saying here. So the social marginal cost reduces by this amount of marginal benefit, but there is no change in the social marginal benefit because of an extra unit of the canal. So the demand curve remains the same the supply curve shifts to the right. Now, why is it shifting to the right? Because it is costing less to the society to manufacture the canal. So if the cost of production goes down, then the 
uh, supply curve shift curve shifts to the right now in this case as well we can observe certain deadweight loss a deadweight loss is created for the society because some units are not being produced and consumed for which the benefit to the society exceeds the cost to the society which means that if we consider the externality then the optimum quantity is this much where the red curve and the demand curve are intersecting but when we do not consider the externality the optimum quantity is given by this intersecting point so these products from here to here they are not being manufactured even though for each of these the cost to the society say if we consider a point here the cost to the society is this and the benefit to the society is this so we have a benefit that is greater than the cost but still we are not manufacturing this because we did not consider the uh, uh, impact of the positive externality so this is a deadweight loss given by this gray colored triangle then we also have a positive consumption externality when an individual's consumption increases the well-being of others but the individual is not compensated by those others so the individual is consuming something so this is a consumption externality the individual is consuming something but through it, his or her consumption there is also an increase in the society's well-being or in the well-being of a bystander which is why it is an externality and this is a benefit so it is a positive impact so it is positive consumption externality externality examples include vaccination because they uh, they uh, stop the spread of infections to even those people who are not getting themselves vaccinated or education of children because when children are educated when people in a country are educated then it also has benefits to the to all the members of the society in terms of not just a better uh, political uh, thought process but also because these educated people will probably later on start other industries provide jobs to more number of people so education is also a positive consumption externality but then the society in most cases does not pay for this education there are very less instances in which education is subsidized by the society now when the society subsidizes then it will become internalization of the externality but it hardly happens or landscaping of one's garden so if you keep your garden clean if you keep your garden landscape then that increases the value of the property of others in the society as well because it looks like a more beautiful society to live in but then others do not pay you for landscaping your garden so this is a positive consumption externality because you are consuming by having a better garden so that is your consumption it is causing an externality which is positive so it is positive consumption externality now in this case because uh, we are only considering consumption so the uh, cost of production or the supply curve will not change which means that smc is equal to pmc as before so this is the equilibrium not considering the externality so we have the private cost and we have the private value now in the case of um, positive consumption externality there is no change in the cost of production so there is no change in the supply curve the supply curve remains as before which is given by s is equal to pmc is equal to smc but in the case of the demand curve we have Uh, the social marginal benefit is equal to the private marginal benefit plus a marginal benefit that this externality is providing so the society is getting this extra benefit by this uh, by this activity or this good that is being consumed and so the total benefit of the society increases so when that happens we can observe that there is a shifting in the demand curve that should occur towards the right given by this difference of marginal benefit now once this happens what we can observe is that earlier this much amount of 
equilibrium quantity of good was being produced. Whereas if we internalize the externality, this much amount should be produced. Because if we consider any point in between, let us say this quantity. Now at this quantity, the benefit is given by this point. So this is telling us the amount of benefit that the society is getting. This is telling us the cost to the society. Now if benefit is greater than the cost, then this good should have been produced. But what is happening is that because we are not considering that into the equation, so we are not producing these or consuming these quantities. So there is a deadweight loss is created for the society because some units are not being produced and consumed for which the benefit to the society exceeds the cost to the society. And here the deadweight loss is given by this curve in gray color. So to summarize, the externality is the uncompensated impact of a person's actions on the well-being of a bystander. And we have four different kinds. We can have negative or positive externality and we can have production or consumption externality. So that's all for today. Thank you for your attention. Jai Hind.